Hey everyone, today is day 8 of my 30 day SQL query challenge and we have a very interesting problem for today. Now as you can see, we have been given an input table and we need to write a query which is going to derive the expected output. Okay. Now to better understand this, first let us read the problem statement. In a given input table, there are rows missing in the job role field. Write a query to fill in those blank fields with appropriate values. Assume row ID is always in sequence and job role field is populated only for the first skill. Provide two different solutions to this problem. Now what this basically means is, the table that is given is basically a table that contains details about the different skills that is required for different job roles. Okay, We have been given three different job roles, data engineer, web developer and data scientist. Okay, So for data engineer, they, are, they have mentioned five different skills like SQL, Python, AWS, etc. For web developer, they have mentioned three different skills and for a data scientist, we have been given four different skills. Now the problem is in this job role field, for some of the records, you can see that the job role is basically not mentioned or it is null, right? So ideally what should happen is we should write a query which is going to fill in these values, okay? So the first five records are belonging to the data engineer. So all the five records should have the job role mentioned as data engineer. The next three record belongs to web developer skills. So all these three records should have the job role as web developer. And finally, the last four records belong to the skills that is required for a data scientist. Hence, the last four records should have the job role populated as data scientist. Okay, And that is exactly what we need to do in this problem. Now, I will be providing you two different solutions to this problem as it is mentioned in the problem statement. Okay, Now, as always, as part of this 30-day SQL query challenge, you will find the data set, the problem statement, everything in my blog as well as in my Discord server. Links will be present in the video description. So, download the data set, try to solve it yourself, use any database of your choice and then you can share your solution in my Discord server and help each other. Okay. Now I will be solving it using the PostgreSQL database and I'm using the PG admin tool. Okay. Now I have already created the job skills table. As you can see here, we have 12 records, right? Now the first solution, right? So I'll just mention it. I am first looking at, okay, or maybe I'll mention it here. This is my solution one. Okay. Solution one. Now, how do I solve this? First and foremost, when I look at this data, I can see that there are some segregation of data that I could probably do, right? Because the first five records belongs to data engineer, the next four records or three record belongs to web developer, and the last four record belongs to data scientist, right? If I could somehow segregate the data based on this understanding, and once I have this segregation, or you could call it like one partition or one window, then within that partition or within that window or within that segment, I could use a window function first value to take this first value from that partition and then paste it across all the other records for each partition. So if you have followed along in my 30 day SQL query challenge, you would have now remembered that there was one problem that we solved, I think few days back, which was similar to this, okay? It is, the problem is actually not very similar, but we had this kind of a problem and we solved it using one particular logic, okay? If you have watched that video, you would be able to solve it now, okay? Now, I'll probably use that same logic as my solution number one, and then for solution number two, I'll give you a different, uh, different logic, okay? Now, what am I basically saying here is, I need to create three different segments, right? Now, in order to create three different segments, probably I could come up with a flag column here, right? And I should have all these five records should have the same flag. The next three records should have the same flag and the last four records should have some other flag, right? So based on the flag, I could create the partition then, right? Now, how do I create a flag? Now, one way of doing that is I could probably use the case statement, right? So what I'll do is I'll just put this here. Okay, and here I'll just tell case when, whenever I find that the job role is present, some value is present, I will give a flag like let's say one. And if it is null, then I'll give the flag like zero. Okay, uh, so let's say I'll say job role is null, case when job role is null, then zero, else one, end, and I'm just going to call it like, maybe not flag, I want to create different segments. So I'll just call it like, segment okay and if i just run this 
Now you can see that I have created this column segment and wherever there is a value in job role, it is one and everywhere else it is zero, right? As you can see here. But this is not my intention. Ideally, what I want is for all these five records, this segment value should be the same. And then for the next three record, the segment value should be something else, but it should be same for these three record, but it should be different from the other records, right? Now, one way of doing that is I could just use a sum here. So if I use a sum on top of this case, then when SQL processes the first record, the sum of one will still be one. When it goes to the second record, it will try to do the sum of this. It returns zero, but since it is a sum, it takes the sum from all the previous processed record as well. And previously the sum had returned one. So one plus zero will be one. And the same thing will happen here. So here everywhere it will be one until it comes to processing the record number six. When the sum function comes to process the record number six, you will see that it will return, the record number six returns one. Previously it had already one. So one plus one will be two. So here it will return two. And that same two gets repeated until here. And then finally here it will be three. Okay, I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain. So basically what you need to do is, or I'll just say sum and I'll just put it, I'll basically put it outside the case. Okay, and maybe I don't need this select statement. I'll remove that and if I run it, it's going to throw me an error. Why? Because sum is an aggregate function. If I want to use aggregate function with some other columns, then I need to use the group by clause. But there is an alternate way I can use sum and that is by converting the sum or basically asking SQL to treat sum as a window function. How I can do that is just by using the over clause and then I can provide an order by saying that row ID. Okay. Now if I run this, now it works absolutely fine and you can see here the first five records, the segment value is now one. Okay. And then for the next three record, the segment value is two. And for the last four record, the segment value is three, right? This is basically what I wanted. Now I can easily segregate or create partitions on this whole data set. So I can create three different partitions based on the value that I got in segment, right? So what I, how I can do that is I can just tell with CT, I'll just put this, I want to treat this like a subquery. So I'll use a CT here with CTE as I'll move this to the right. And here I'll just tell select star from CT. Okay. Now if I run it, it's still the same. Okay. But basically what I want is from this result set, I want to create a partition based on the segment value. So here I'll just tell, and I know that once I create this partition, I want to fetch the first value from this field that is data engineer. And that same value I put it, I want to put it across all the other fields, right? So the window function that I should use to do this partition and fetch the value is basically the first value window function, right? So I can just tell first value. Okay. And I'll say the column is job role. I'll say over. And now I want to do the partition because that is the whole reason I created that segment partition by segment and then order by row ID. Okay. And I'm going to call it like, let's say job role updated. Okay. Now if I run this, now you can see here, the first five records are getting the value as job role. The last next three is web developer and then the last four records I'm getting it like data scientist. Okay. This is exactly what I wanted. Now in order to fetch the, the proper fields that I want, I can just tell row ID comma job role updated. Okay. Um, or I don't need that. It's already coming in the next line here. And then here I can just tell skills, right? And in fact, I can just rename this updated to job role. If I run it, now you can see that I am actually getting the output that I wanted. Okay. So this is basically my solution number one to this particular problem. I hope you understand what I'm doing here. Okay. And the logic that I have used. Okay. Now let me give you a solution number two. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just create another window here. Okay. And I'll just query the data from the same table. Okay. And I think I have a dot I need to remove. And you can see that I have this input table, right? Now, my second solution is going to be little tricky, but, but it's very interesting. Now, if you look at the data that we have, ideally what we want is we know that the first record in for each job role, it will be the job role basically will be populated, right? That is what was mentioned in the in, uh, in the problem statement as well, right? So somehow if we could take the first record separately and then whenever we are processing the second record, we could take the job role from the previous record and put it here if it was null and then we could repeat it for all the records. 
probably we could solve it until we find a record where the job role is already populated. If the job role is already populated, then we use it. If not, we take from the previous iteration, whatever job role we got. Now, how we can do that is by using a recursive SQL query. By using a recursion, we can loop through the data. Okay, and that is exactly what we are going to do here. Now, in order to use recursion, you might know the syntax. The syntax is with recursive CTE as, and here I need to say, there I need to provide a base query here, right? Then I need to do an union, and then I say recursive uh, query here, okay? Uh, something like that. And then this recursive query with uh, termination condition, something like this. And then here I can just tell select star from uh, CT. Right. This is basically the syntax of how I can use recursive CT. If you're not using PostgreSQL, then you don't need to use this keyword, right? If you're using SQL Server or Oracle, you don't need to use this keyword. But and inside here, you probably need to provide the aliases, okay? Or whatever fields that you mention here, you need to mention that uh, column names here, okay? But since I'm using PostgreSQL, I don't need to provide the column names, but I still need to use this keyword. Okay, and if you're using MySQL, then the syntax, whatever I use here will exactly work in MySQL. Okay, so now let's come up with the base query. Now, what is the base query? It's basically when this recursion executes, first it will execute the base query in the first iteration. Okay, it will execute this query and it will basically this CT is going to have the data that was returned from the base query. In the second iteration, it will execute only this part of the query. Okay, whatever you have mentioned, the second query after the union, only this query will be executed. Okay, generally in this query, we will be using the CT. Okay, so and then in the third iteration, again, only this query will, ex will be executed and it will continue. Okay, so in each iteration, only this part of the query gets executed, whereas the base query executes only in the first iteration. Okay, so that is the whole logic. Now, I need to come up with a base query. My base query is pretty simple. I just need to fetch all the data. That is the row ID. Then I need the job role and I need the skills. Okay, from my table that is job skills, right? And that's all. But I need to put a condition saying that where row ID equal to one. Why? Because my base query, I only want to process the first record. Okay, I'll process the first record. I'll take the data from there. And then I in from this part of the query here, I'll start processing only from the second record onwards. Okay, and whenever I'm processing the second record onwards, I'll take the data that I want. Okay, you'll come to know when I write the query. Okay, now this is fine. This will basically fetch me the first record. Okay, that is fine. Then in the recursive part of the query, what I want to do is I want to say select from I still want to use that CT, whatever the data that I got from the previous iteration, right? And I want to join it with my main table, that is my job skills table. So I'll just join it with this. How do I join it? How I want to join it is in the base query, I'm processing the first record, then going forward from the next iteration, I want to process only one record at a time, but I want to process from the next record onwards, right? So how I can do the join is I can say, the job skills, this whole table, I want to start from here. So the, and I'm going to give an alias, let's say JS, okay. And I'll say JS dot row ID should be equal to whatever row ID I got from CT, okay. That is CT dot row ID plus one. Why? In the base query, when I executed this, the row ID was one. So SQL processed the first record. Now in the next iteration, I want SQL to process the next record. That is this one, right? This row ID is two. The previous iteration, the row ID that I got was one. So one plus one, this will return two and it will match with two, that is my job skills table. So this record gets selected, okay? Now I want to fetch the data from this record. So here I can just tell JS dot row ID. Now, once I have fetched this, the next thing is the job role. Now, job role, I cannot fetch from this second record, right? Remember, or try to imagine that we are currently processing this record number two, okay? Or SQL is processing the record number two. Here, the job role is null, right? So ideally, if it is null, then I want to fetch the job role from the previous record. The previous record comes from the previous iteration. Previous iteration comes from the CTE table, right? So if it is null, I want to it to take from the CT. And if it is not null, that is when you're processing the record number six, I want the job role to be fetched from my job skills table, that is from this table, okay? So if this job role is having a value, then fetch it from the JS table. 
if it is not present then fetch it from the previous iteration that is from the CTE table right so what I'll do is I'll just use a call lease here so I'll say call lease and I need to correct the spelling call lease right and I my first priority is from the JS table JS dot job skills right but in case here it is null then I want to fetch it from the previous iteration that is CTE dot job uh, not job skills job role actually job role and the same thing here okay uh, and I'm going to call it like let's say as job role okay and then the last field is skills that I can just fetch from the JS table okay so I hope you understand what I'm doing here okay so in the first uh, so if I have to explain again in the first iteration basically the base query returns me the first record then from going forward going onwards from there in the second iteration this job skills will basically in the second iteration it is going to process the second record in the third iteration it's going to process the third record and so on and so forth right in every iteration I'm fetching the row ID and the skills from this table itself okay which is fine because that is processing the current the next records in every iteration right when it comes to fetching the job role I want to fetch it from the job skills table if it is not null, if it, if it comes here or if it comes here, wherever it is null, I want to fetch from the previous iteration. The previous iteration is in the CT, right? So that's what I'm doing. And I think this is fine because this will be our join condition plus it will be the termination condition because at one stage, it, when it comes to the last record, the row ID will be 12. And when you do 12 plus one, it will become 13. It does not match with anything and it will terminate the recursion, right? So if I just execute this, you can see that I'm actually getting my output straight away, right? So the first five records are data engineer, then web developer, then data scientist, okay? So this is my second solution using recursive CT. I hope you understood this logic and I hope you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with my query number nine.